Oh, hey, greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with Mech Tech Keyboards with another transmission today. You caught me in the middle of drinking my last cup of coffee for the morning. Actually, just getting a late start. It's been a long week doing some organizing, um, getting some projects prepared. But today we're going to be taking a look at a keyboard that hasn't gotten as much fanfare as I thought it would for what it is. But um, before we talk about this is the Kidoos. Kidoos? Kidoos. Kidoos. I don't know really how to pronounce it right, but Kidoos. Now, the first time I heard of this company was with this board, the TH80. That's how a lot of people know it, the Epo Maker TH80. But this is, in fact, a key to his keyboard that is an NJ80. The Epo Maker version is a rebrand, and now they've messed with the firmware so much so that they're sending out alerts not to use the firmware update. So, um, <clears throat> I actually have a little bit of a story with this keyboard. Um, and if you go back in my videos, you can get the whole thing. But uh, the long and short of it was I purchased one off AliExpress for what I thought was a really good deal. I thought maybe it was going to be a scam, but then I received an actual keyboard that didn't work. Um, an entire column, uh, you know, didn't work right off the bat. And uh, I put in a dispute and I also made a post about it. But anyway, another vendor came to me and basically the story I was given or the way that I understood it was that uh, somebody had purchased e-waste a whole batch that had gone through that had, had had soldering issues because of something wrong with the machine that they basically had just dumped them off to somebody for really cheap as e-waste you know so they could pick off the hot swap sockets the microcontrollers whatever the leds <clears throat> but that they turned around and just resold them and that i received one of those units so uh this um I believe this person was from Kidoos, but it was a different company name. And you know how sometimes they they have these long names. I mean, if you don't speak Chinese, as I don't, um, they're just long, hard to pronounce, and hard to even remember. So I don't know if he represented the company that represents the brand or whatever. He he gave me a good deal. Um, I purchased it, and I was like, I was really happy because I did make a video going, "Wow, this keyboard, you know." it had issues but obviously because it was e-waste so since i got this keyboard i've absolutely loved it i think this is a great keyboard um now i did purchase it when it was in the uh 60 range i believe and received a discount it roughly goes between 70 and 90 from what i've seen it um though epo maker's version is about the same what they're doing with their firmware i would personally i would stay away from it Anyway, so this keyboard is very well built, and I've got to say uh, another thing that I believe to be true. I don't have it right. Oh, yeah, I do. Um, is <clears throat> this is the Ducato VN66, and this keyboard is extremely similar. Oh, the Ducato VN66, I believe, is extremely similar in its design. I, I would... I would bet money that they came out of the same manufacturing shop. So it's probably the same company and just a couple of different brands. But minus the pocket and the fact that, you know, it's smaller, they're literally... I mean, you, I think you can see the similarities here. So this is also another really great keyboard that Epo Maker is also rebranding and selling as the TH66, I believe. But this is a great keyboard. I've never even modded this keyboard. It just sounded great. I mean, it's... It could use some modding, especially the stabilizers, but for what it sounded like, I was like, this is good to go. Um, I actually meant to do a review on this video and haven't done a full one, and maybe I should and do a mod video, but that's for another day. Anyway, I apologize for that little side trip there, but I just kind of wanted to give background about what I have experienced with, the key with this company so far, at least with the manufacturer. Um, my first incident, and I did make a, a video of it, 
of all the issues that I had. But like I said, I corrected it and made another video when I received this one because, um, like I said, I was reached out to and told basically that I, you know, sorry that happened to you. But I, you know, in the end, I was happy and I'm happy with the keyboards. But today we're taking a look at the NJ81, which is, I mean, like I said, it. I think this keyboard should have been got received a lot more fanfare for, you know, actually breaking the mold. Because don't get me wrong, I own numerous 75% with and without knob, but they aren't the only layout. <laughs> let's you know, let's keep the um, variety flowing. I, I mean, I understand jumping on a trend, but, you know, there's also such a thing as setting new trends, and there's so many exciting layouts out there. Yes, some are going to be thrown at the wall, and they're going to fall right down, but I think that other ones, even existing ones with some minor changes, uh, could bring a lot of excitement. There was a lot of possibilities. I mean, I play around with, you know, just the, the keyboard generators and have created some pretty wacky layout myself, layouts myself. But I uh, I just know that there's, there's a lot more room for creativity. But some of these companies seem to be leaning towards, let's stick with what sells, you know. And it's like ever since the Satisfaction 75, almost every single key, keyboard company, including Drop, with their... I guess you could call it a keyboard. I mean, if you've heard it, oh my God, what they're asking for it. But even they followed along, but they, I think they so far have done the, the poorest job. I was kind of hoping that people would be like, oh, maybe it's time to leave the 75% aside. Not stop making them, just stop making them so much. I mean, Akko, I don't know how many 75% they have on their list now. It's ridiculous. Today we're taking a look at the Kiduos NJ81. I've previously enjoyed the NJ80, which is a very well-built keyboard and something that I've been able to rely on. It is a three mode and has a nice little pocket for the uh, uh, 2.4 gigahertz receiver. I also believe that this one, the Ducato VN66, uh, was made by the same manufacturer because of the way that the case is designed. They're very similar um, to these. I mean, the way that they're designed, they're either using similar you know, molding or designers or they're actually coming out of the same factory. I, I venture to, to put some money on that. But putting these aside, today we're taking a look at the NJ81. Now the NJ81 is I guess, I mean, I guess you could call it an 80% because it does have the function rows and it has the column, but it also has an OLED screen. So now I do believe from what I've read, but it's not out yet that I can find because right now the OLED, I believe, only shows like the battery power and just a couple of basic stats, but that it's being updated to be able to add GIS and you know, different system information, you know, basically be a little bit more extensible. But I haven't looked into that that much yet. Um, I'm afraid that it's going to be a Windows program. But granted, if I can plug it up to a Linux, I mean, a Windows laptop and load, a, you know, whatever the settings and then be able to use it on my Linux desktop, then I'll be fi fine. Um, you know, it says it works with Android. Now, this one, I did... Uh, purchase uh, from Taobao through Superbuy, um, so it uh, does not come with switches, and I'm not sure, I do believe it's the three mode, because it says it has a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, so I'm, uh, from what I've been learning, certain keyboard names, even if it's the same model, uh, the Chinese government provides licenses to sell outside of the country or into different regions of the world. And sometimes that's why Tabao doesn't allow international shippers for them or international buyers for the most part, from what I understand. So I may have a, a not a counterfeit, but a 
under the radar. But I don't know. Super Buy is a company. They they purchase for you and then they just reship it. So and there's a couple of companies that have been popping up to do the same. So I don't know. I'm just uh, interested to see because I actually have another one of these coming from Keep Monkey. And I'm going to compare the differences because one of the things that I know people have said, but I cannot confirm, um, is that there's two different versions of this keyboard. One that will allow an update to the OLED screen and one that will not. So when I find out for sure, for a fact, I will share that information. So anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the keyboard that we have in front of us today. All right. Well, I did. I, they, they charged... Uh, it was a minimal fee for inspection. I figured, why not? If it's broken, you know, they may as well know and send it back at that point. So, here we are. Wow. Oh, that's nice. So, um, it's not the thinnest of plastic, but it's um, also not the thickest of plastic. But this is definitely something that could serve as a dust cover. I know in some environments, people, you know, they're dealing with a lot of dust. Being able to put this on your keyboard at night is going to help keep it much cleaner or when you're not using it so as you can see we have north facing sockets we have our oled screen that has a nice little plastic protector for right now um, what i've been doing with oled screens is i take um i have a couple of uh screen protectors for phones but the film type not the glass type and i will cut little pieces to cover the OLED screens because a lot of times all they have is a plastic protectant and I mean even a little bit of dust rubbing across it can mess it up but those film protectors are pretty good because they some to the most to a certain degree they're self-healing but they're going to protect the screen below it. so just a just a little tip from your Uncle Mar anyway ooh, now we have some strong very strong um, stock stabilizers and they're clear uh, for stock, I do not. I think this has got to be the first time that I've seen clear, clear stock um, stabilizer housing. The stem are a light baby blue, and if I'm not mistaken, they feel like a palm. They're a very soft, slippery type plastic. So we have their website right there. This is the Kidus NJ81 version 1.2. That'll probably come in handy when I'm trying to figure out about the OLED status of this keyboard. Obviously, we can see it's north-facing, but it will accept three or five pins just fine. Um, I thought it was a gasket mounted, but I could be wrong because there is little or no flex, I should say. So let's see what else we have in the box here. All right, so we got your standard fare, as you would find in most others. Oh, oh. A spare stabilizer. Thank you, Kiduos. That's nice. It's always nice to have spares of anything that, you know, has the possibility of breaking, especially, you know, if it's a, it's a, if it's a minor cost, it's a good thing. So start a new journey. Obviously, this is all in Chinese. I could run it through my lens later. But seeing as it has nothing really in English... I'm going to assume that this is the met for the um, Chinese market keyboard. So besides uh, the instruction manual, which I assume is what it is, and the extra stabilizer, we have a basic USB-A to USB-C um, rubber cable. And one of your... Uh, these are one of the sturdier ones. Some of these, you can literally pull on the leg and it'll just start bending backwards. or like make it out... Uh, it's like out of aluminum foil. They bend so easily. But usually when they have these uh, little notches, not only does it make it easier to grip when you're pulling the switch out, uh, but they, uh, they don't bend out of shape very easy. So that I'll go ahead and keep out the rest off. Go ahead and leave them there. So not much in the box to speak of, though it is packed quite well because this did come in a bag. It was this box inside of a bag. And though there's a couple of little dint dings on the box, um, the keyboard seems to be fine. I've had now three keyboards that were shipped, you know, just inside of their box inside of a bag. No, you know, protection whatsoever besides the bag and receive them with cracked cases usually at the corner because, you know, who knows how these packages are treated. Oh, who knows how these, 
I've received, you know, sometimes keyboards that come with cracked cases because they were just put, the box was just put in a bag, no bubble wrap, no nothing. Even shipping within the United States, <laughs> you, you need to package it better than that. But, I mean, because a lot of times these keyboards, if they hit the right way, especially on a hard surface as concrete, um, they're, you know, something's going to give. Anyway, so we have what looks like a lovely board. Again, I do not, it does not feel like it's gasket mounted, but because this is a um, snap and fit, and I mean, oh yeah, I mean, again, just taking a look at the bottom of the uh, Ducato VN66. And the bottom of the, uh, I mean, it's, they're almost the same. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, the NJ80 is just slightly, I mean, two millimeters taller, maybe two millimeters wider. I mean, literally. Ha! Huh. Very cool. Very cool. So, set that aside for right now. But since all of these are fairly similar, so I'm going to assume that it has the same type of gasket gasket mounting that um, the other ones do. There are gaskets there, but there's literally no room for them to flex. So, it doesn't really do much. Now, if it does help stabilize the sound across the keyboard, then I think it, it is achieving something. I mean, flex, I understand people, some people, oh, I have to have flex, but I could take it or leave it. It really depends on the entire experience of typing. I mean, I don't want to be typing on a trampoline, but I have been typing on keyboards that are tray mounted for a long, long time. <laughs> Longer than I care to say because you'll know how old I am. But... You know, because uh, gasket mounting and these uh, these new mounting styles only recently came along. All right. Wanted to make sure there wasn't any cables there, so it looks like that is just a clear window so that you can see the OLED that's below. So, obviously, if I'm opening her up, I want to be a little bit careful not to scratch it from below. All right. A couple more tabs. And there we go. All right, so there's the screen, which I'm gonna avoid touching for right now. And, all right. No, this is not even attempting to be a gasket mount. As you guys can see, it is just a tray mount. So, which, I mean, it's fine. I believe this keyboard is well, with super buy fees and everything, I think I paid $52. Uh, so, it, like I said, I don't mind tray mount as long as the experience is good. So we have a tray mount keyboard and, yep, we have a battery underneath. And then obviously we have all the cables for, I'm going to guess that, that there's a daughter board under there. Let me see, because where's the, uh, I don't know, there's no daughter board. So that just must be the, this is the controller for the OLED. Yeah, I don't, like I said, I was just opening it up just to kind of show you guys what's in there. I'm going to do a stock, but this definitely looks like a, a kit to come back to and do either some uh, mass loaded vinyl <clears throat> or, or a silicone pour. But we'll have to check to see, like, oh, okay, yeah, that, all just seems to be going to sorry yeah there is some sort of logic board I'm gonna guess that's some sort of charging board down there that it all connects up to this just provides oh oh I see what's going on all right so this is the battery and this battery JST is just providing power to the board this one is actually the interface but and then it, hmm. So the data is going over these wires, but this is connected to this daughter board, which is Bluetooth. Hmm. I don't know. I, I'm 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 a little pertu I, I'm a little confused, honestly, to be honest with you. I mean, obviously, this is for the OLED. 
I'm, I'm going to assume because obviously this can't carry anything more than power. So this has got to be data and how it's going to that. Maybe the, the MCU is there. I mean, that's the only thing that I could think of and that this is just an LED controller because I really... Like I said, I don't want to unplug this. No, okay, those are the LED controllers, if I'm not mistaken. And, but, hmm. Yeah, there's too little, too little to know. NJ81M, I'm going to guess mobile, and version 1.2, 2022 of 401, so April 1st. All right. Oh, April 1st, yay! <laughs> All right, like I said, I just was I just wanted to take a quick look in there. I'm I'm obviously going to come back and mod it. Now there is a foam uh, that looks like poron between the plate and PCB, and you saw that we had a thin layer of I would guess EVA foam down below, uh, but underneath the the PCB. So let's go ahead and get this puppy back on there. All right. Now that we've taken a look at the insides, let's um, let's go ahead and load up some switches on here, huh? Now I've had these for a while. I've been meaning to do more in-depth uh, reviews, but in my testing, I have found that a lot of the KTT switches, though good, they're all they feel very similar. Um, I got a batch of, a while back, I got a batch, I believe, of 10 different switches. Only one was a tactile. The rest were linears, and even though they had different spring weights, I, I couldn't, I'm usually pretty good at telling the difference between switches blind, blind testing on a, you know, on a switch tester. What is that? You know, especially if just, it's, it's within a few switches I'm trying to guess. But I couldn't tell the difference between any of these, uh, linear ktt switches now they're it's not that they're bad and they do have slightly different tones because of the materials but they all feel extremely similar um nothing wrong with that they are fairly fairly decently priced especially if you know how to source them properly um i believe i paid roughly 20 24 i want to say 24 cents a switch or less now but i did buy quite a few no i paid 18 cents a switch, something like that it was it was ridiculously cheap that's why i got so many of them anyway today we're going to be loading up some kang whites it's a linear switch with a pretty smooth actuation a nice bottom out uh, these are stock but I'd figure we'd keep the look and go ahead and stay, you know, with the uh, the white on white here and load these up. So let me take a sip of my coffee. Let me take another one. That's good. All right. Now let's load up these switches. There we are loaded with the keycaps. I'm in the middle of organizing, so there's still some things that aren't exactly where I need them. I'm just trying to put everything in a place where it's out of the way, but I know where it is when I need it. This is a magnet, and that's a steel plate. Um, I have trouble sometimes. I mean, unless I have it out and I can feel, feel the weight, I have a trouble distinguishing. Using a magnet, well, I'll just tell you it's steel. If it doesn't stick, it's aluminum. Um, I prefer plastic, but if it's metal, steel or aluminum really doesn't make too much of a difference to me. So um, just a little test that I wanted to do. Now, real quick before I pop on some keycaps, let's, let's plug you in. And it is on the left-hand side here. Wee. Oh, and in red it says Kijus NJ81. 
All right, yeah, so right now it's just saying that it's in USB mode and in Windows mode, and the rest is in Chinese. So I'm gonna guess that I'm gonna have to do a firmware update on this, and I'm actually gonna have to find an English version of the manual if one exists. If not, I'm gonna have to be doing a lot of a Google Lens Translate with the little booklet that I did receive. So, sorry, I enjoy my coffee. Anyway, real quick, the keys that I have chosen for this one uh, is a set that I got. I ordered one and I ended up getting two sets. So, um, and I do quite like it. So I figured I'm going to use it again. This is Shaco. It's a, a PBT die sub clone. Uh, oh no, this is a double shot. Never mind. My apologies. If I'm not mistaken. This is a double shot set from Gliging. And just to 1.4, 1.5. Okay, so some of the body is a little bit thicker than the other. 1.3, 1.4. And okay, so basically, I guess what the first reading was it, it ranges from 1.3 to 1.5. And as we can see, the ribs there. This is a double shot uh, keycap. So, um, wow, I really made out. Because I told him, I was like, uh, I didn't order to. And I checked because sometimes I'll add something to a cart and then I'll keep, I'll forget, and then I'll see it again. And I'll be like, yeah, add that to the cart again. And I don't realize when I go to check out that there's a two next to the order number. And I'm like, yeah, I've ordered two. But in this case, I actually double checked and then no, I just ordered one. And they're like, huh, just keep it. I was like, so anyway, this is a Shaco keycap set. Now, I don't know why there's some extra ones on there. Uh, oh yeah, there's the cover. But I did want to just confirm one thing. Let's just go ahead and pick out row. Well, I start from zero, zero, one, two. Some people start from one. So this is either row two or three, depending on how you count. With these King Whites, which I have not tested before, um, in the north facing configuration, and if I put the keycap on here, let me bend this out and let me grab. All right, so before I loaded keys up on here, I wanted to just do real quick. Now, I understand a lot of people are talking about north facing interference. I haven't tested these yet to make sure, but. Most new switches have already been modified. The molds have been modified. There are, yes, there are still some older switches that are sitting in inventory that are going out that have that, they don't have the, the right degree of slope. And that slope is what can cause a, an extra tap when you press down, especially on the keys in the middle rows when dealing with thicker cherry keycap profiles. Now, um, one of the things that can guarantee you won't have that issue is if you're dealing with a long pole stem. A long pole stem is going to stick out past the um, housing, the top of the housing. As you can see, this one doesn't. It has a full four millimeter travel. One way that you can tell if it has a long pole stem or not is to look at the specs and see the, act, the actuation force or the travel distance. If it's below four millimeters, that means that it has a longer pole and it's gonna actuate at a, at a shorter distance. So what I'm gonna do in this situation, because the problem is that what people will encounter is the keycap actually striking and locking onto, I mean, not locking onto, but clapping and pinging the, the actual switch. What this test right here shows is that there's no interference. When there's interference, um, it would grab that piece and it wouldn't let go. Now, it, I can feel it, so if your ears are extremely sensitive, do you hear a double tap? I don't. So anyway, because I know I'm gonna get people saying, you're using cherry double shots on a north facing. Now, if that little bit, you know, of, like I said, that little bit of bindage, which was, in my opinion, 
you know i mean it, it, it it's it's tr it's an issue when you know you push and you can't pull it out that's actual to me north facing interference when you're actually still able to slide it out that means there's still space between the two pieces um but but in case you have that situation all you need to do is find yourself now i know this may not be the most ideal but it is a uh, quick and easy fix i'm trying to find just a spare piece of paper which you apparently do not have any paper no. So if you ever do come across the issue where you do have a north facing LED keyboard. Now, understand if you want shine through and by south facing, you're gonna find yourself in a whole different dilemma. But if for some reason you have the situation where your keys are striking and holding on to a piece of paper, then you take the tiniest piece of paper, this one actually might be too much, and you just, shove it into the stem of the keycap stem and then all right we're going north facing this way and now we really have created enough distance because we're literally just talking i mean there's it's not even holding i just lost the my tester oh. So once you stick that little piece of paper into the keycap stem, um, like I said, just a tiny little piece of paper, we're only looking for like a tenth of a millimeter. Um, at that point, there's absolutely none, not even a little rub. I mean, it literally just falls out. Um, just to do it on both sides to show. So that that is a way to remediate that um, most switches within the next couple of years especially once they've exhausted old, old um, inventory will no longer have this issue that's why a lot of manufacturers still make north facing because despite the fact that enthusiasts mostly you know are fine either with no RGB or no shine through uh, there are still a lot of entrants people coming into the hobby um, that may go further down the rabbit hole or may just stay where they're at. But the majority of keyboards that these manufacturers are selling are keyboards that have shine through. Obviously, a lot of them are gamer keyboards. The gamer industry is a huge industry and they're all about RGB, especially if you're using like open RGB or one of those others that connects all of your RGB systems you know, and, and, and puts them into sync, which don't get me wrong, that's pretty awesome, but I, I don't have the time to make things pretty. I like, you know, I like some lights on my keyboard. Sometimes I just turn them off. If I can make a single color that matches or helps accentuate the keycaps, it's a nice underglow, great. But very few sh a shine through caps that I have uh, because it just, I don't know, it's just, eh, if I can't see, <laughs> I'm not going to be doing too much work. So anyway, I just wanted to show you guys that really quick before I load, load this up with keys because um, I know that this is this is something that you know some people consider an issue. Uh, I'm not going to be doing that here because, like I said, with these, yes, it it it, it catches on to the paper, but it's not holding on to it. So while it, it is going to probably make a little bit of a tap, I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference. That's why I took the piece of paper out. But let me go ahead and. 
and get these uh, loaded on. And then we will come back for a sound test. Well, here we are. We've got her built, but before I finished her up, I just wanted to cover a, a couple of things. Um, I do have to just provide more specs, uh, you know, hardware specs regarding things, and I'm starting to make a list, and I'm starting to check it twice. I, I want to have, I want my videos to at least address the majority of important questions that I can ahead of time. Um, obviously, I'm always up for answering a question. If you have one, just post it in the comments and I'll get to it as soon as I can. But anyway, we have two sets of feet on this uh, Key Duos NJ81. When we're set at this height, um, the back of the unit measures 31.5 millimeters from the base or from whatever surface you have it on, while the chin remains at 21.5 or whatever um, angle you've got it on. Now, the default typing angle is six degrees, but if you flip the feet up, you're gonna get a whopping 14 degrees of typing angle, which, I mean, that may work for some people. I don't think it'll work for me, especially not without a key rest. So this is definitely gonna be one of those keyboards that if you're gonna be using, um, use a wrist rest, a pad, put a book under there, something. You're gonna, you're gonna prevent damage to your hands. But I also wanted to show Let's see. Oh, I really got to find another place for the microphone to where I can hear it, but stop bumping into it because when I bump into it, that's why the camera starts shaking. But real quick, I did also want to show the, the stabilizer since I am going to be doing this stock. I wanted to show. Uh, Since I'm, I am going to be doing this as a stock sound test, I just wanted to show the stabilizers real quick. Now, they are, like I had shown, very, very well attached, and they have the tiniest amount of lube on them. Now, they are also, my guess is that that stem is made out of palm or PA66 or something similar. I've seen this now. This is the third keyboard I've come across that has that, and they tend to be super smooth even if they're like rattly they don't rattle as much um, the smoothness of that plastic is definitely making a difference so uh, somebody's doing something right but I just wanted to, to, to point that out that like I said it has the minimal amount of um, of uh, lube on there which honestly minimal means they might have actually paid attention instead of just dropping a glob on there so but we'll the sound test will tell us all but anyway, I hope that that gives you, you know, an initial understanding of the keyboard. Like I said, I am going to have to find uh, the English instructions to this keyboard and find out about any firmware updates and make sure that I have the correct board for the firmware updates and, you know, everything, what have you. I, like I said, I also have another one coming but I believe that is the non-wireless version. Now, this is only Bluetooth from what I can gather because it does not have a dongle. There wasn't a dongle in the box. Whenever I do look it up, it says Bluetooth. Drop apparently was doing a, a pre-order, but not enough people signed up, I think, although they say sold through. So I don't know. Uh, but like I said, I'm going to be coming back to this later on to find out about customizing that OLED screen and also you know, about like the light controls, because like right now, I mean, yeah, I know there's lights going on, but I don't know. Oh, that changes the background color of the uh, OLED. Okay, so this must be function. I appear to have them flipped. So, and then that must be control. So let me at least get this right. 
So we know that function delete cycles through different background colors of that. I want that to be print screen. I haven't programmed it yet. Right now it's just cycling through colors, but like I said, oh, I just looked at my desktop and I've got tons of calculator open. So one of those was definitely open the calculator. <laughs> So anyway, I will be coming back to this keyboard to provide um, more information about firmware, about software, key remapping, and then at some point I will also be doing the, um, I will do, be doing a mod video. Uh, I do believe that this will lend nicely to either um, kill mat or a silicone pour, but we'll find out when we get there. So until the next transmission, Keep calm and keyboard on, but stay tuned. Sound test is right after this. <laughs>